Hi guys, it's Mina. I'm sorry the lighting's really awful. It's dark tonight and I'm sorry I don't sound too happy. I just found out a friend of mine just recently passed away today and you're probably thinking then why are you filming a video if you're kind of sad? Well, I think this might get my mind off it. So I'm going to read you guys a story. I'm going to read you guys Briar Rose or Sleeping Beauty. Briar Rose or Sleeping Beauty. Once upon a time there lived a king and a queen who, were, who grieved because they had no child. Finally a daughter was born to them and the king was so happy that he gave a great christening feast. As godmothers for his little daughter, <sighs> uh, he asked all the fairies but one in, in the kingdom. Seven he asked but the bad-tempered fairy he left out. He hoped that each after the fairy custom would give the princess a gift. For the christening, the company returned. From the christening, the company returned to the palace where splendid feast. Oh my gosh, my room smells so good right now. Sorry, I have my wallflower plugged in. Had been prepared before the, each fairy had placed a crinkled emerald, crinkled emerald plate like a clover leaf set with diamonds like dew drops just as they were taking their place here <sighs> okay well in came the cross fairy who had not been invited she rode into the hall hall on a snapping snapdragon for the slight had made her crosser than ever. The king had plate had a plate of pure pearl like a lily petal set before her, but she angrily pushed it away and looked enviously at the emerald plates which had been made order for seven fairies. The cross fairy thought herself ill -treat treated and muttered threats. Under her breath, one of the wisest fairies who had seated near her heard these threats and felt sure she meant to do some harm to the little princess. When the company rose from this, the table, the wise fairy hid behind the cradle that she might speak last and perhaps undo some of the harm which she knew was burring in the bad-tempered fairy's mind. Now the fairies began to give their gifts to the princess. The youngest fairy gave her beauty, the next wit, the third grace, the fourth virtue, the fifth a lovely voice, the sixth a smile with all, to win all hearts. Then was the cross fairy's turn. It, with her ivory uh, pointed like a spear at the royal baby, she cried out, The king's daughter will her in her rosebud youth. She'll prick her hand with a spindle and fall down dead. Everyone fell a crying with a fright, with fright as this terrible gift. And as for the poor queen, she instantly fainted away. But just then, the wise fairy popped up from behind the cradle and said, "Be comforted, O king. Revive, O queen. My gift st is still too." I cannot undo entirely what this unlike unkind fairy has done. Your daughter will prick her hand with a the spindle and fall to the floor, but instead of dying, she will sink into a deep sleep from which will last a hundred years from the sleep. When your her dream is over, a king's son shall wake shall wake her waken her. Yet the king hoped to save his dear child from the threatened e evil. So he had the heralds proclaim the, that no one in all the country should spin, or even should have a spindle in the house, uh, on pain of death. When the princess was fifteen or sixteen years old, the king and queen went one day to one of their country houses, leaving the princess with her maids.
While the maids were enjoying a gossip with the gardeners, the princess went room roaming about the palace, exploring room after one room after another. At least she came to an old tower, and at the top of the tower she found a little room in which an old woman sat busily spinning. This old woman had never heard of the king's pro proclamation. Good day, Granny, said the princess. What are you doing? I'm spinning, my pretty lass, the old woman who did not recognize her. That is char charming, the princess cried. How do you do it? Let me see whether I can spin. She caught a whirling spindle, but because she was too eager or because the fairy's decree must be fulfilled, the spindle pricked her hand, and she dropped to the floor in faint. The old woman, greatly alarmed, cried for help. People came running from all sides. The gardeners threw water in the face of the princess. The maids loosened, their, loosened her clothes and beat her hands and batted her, her temples, but nothing could rouse her. Then the king and queen, who had heard the alarm, came too. They knew that at once the fairy's evil wish had been fulfilled. They had, they had the princess carried to the most beautiful room, deep in the heart of the palace, and laid on a bed decked with rose and silver coverlets. She might have been an angel as the, as she lay there. For her deep, deep, for her deep sleep had not driven away from away her lovely color. Her cheeks and lips were as pink as briar roses. Her forehead fair as a lily. Her eyes were closed, but she breathed softly, and it was easy to see that happy dreams played beneath her eyelids. The king commanded that she be left to sleep in peace until. The hour of her awakening had come. Now, the wise fairy, whose quick wit had saved the life of the princess, was thousands of miles away, but she knew what had happened and came at once in her chariot of gold fire, drawn by the eagles. Drawn by the eagles, she was afraid the princess would be frightened and lonesome if she should awaken all alone in an empty, crumbling castle. So this is what she did. She touched with her wand everything every and everybody in the palace except the king and the queen, and she touched the governess and the ladies-in-waiting, the gentlemen and the officers, the stewards, cooks, guards, and pages. She touched those weeping maids and shamed-faced gardeners. She touched the horses in the stables, the great mastiff in the yard and the princess's tiny poodle which lay on the bed beside her and she touched them they and, and as she touched them they all fell asleep not to waken until their mistress would should wake so they might all so that they might all Attend upon her. Even the first slept, and the spit uh, that stood before it, f full of half roasted pitch partridges and pheasants, it all took but a moment for the fairies' work quickly. Then the king and queen, having kissed their daughter, left the hushed palace. The king issued a new proclamation forbidding anyone to approach in the gates. But such laws were not needed, for in a half an hour there had sprung a, a, about the palace a hedge of thorny shrubs, and a year by year these grew into trees so thick and high that neither beast nor man could force a way through. The castle itself was hidden. Only the top of the tower could be seen from a distance. When on the the very day that the hundred years ended, the son of a king, the reigning a hunt, a hunting, and then, I mean, and spied 
the t spot spied the uh, tower by beyond the thorny wood. He asked what it was, and many strange stories were related to related. But finally, an old peasant told him a true tale of a sleeping princess, and one and of the king's son who was to waken her. The prince fell very be sure from the way his heart began beating and he was the king's son who was to have that wonderful adventure and he set out at once for the wood and when he reached the reached it the great trees and the thorns opened all of their own accord to let him pass but closed behind him so that he that even his companions could not pass through. He came at last to the courtyard of a palace over which hung an utter silence. Nothing living was to be seen but men and animals in profound slumber. The prince crossed the court and mounted the stairs. In the guard room, fast asleep, the guards stood draw up in line and indeed in every room he had he entered he found men and women some standing some sitting often with smiling lips but always with the closed eyes on he went and on to the very heart of the palace where in a beautiful room of gold he saw the loveliest sight in the world a sleeping princess a statue in rose and silver so fair that he, there she seemed an angel. He fell on his knees beside her and looked at her in awe. Just as that, just at that moment, the enchantment came to an end. The princess opened her eyes and saw her dream bef before her. She smiled on her kneeling youth and said, "Is it you, my prince? I have waited long." They talked for hours and still had not said half that was in their hearts to say. Meanwhile, everything in the palace waked with the princess, and everyone took up his ta task just where he had left it. As nightfall, a lady-in-waiting curtsied to the princess and announced that supper was served. And after supper, the king's son led his bride in his gorgeous, in her gorgeous robes of a hundred years ago to the royal chap chapel, where they were married by the very priest who had married the father and mother of the princess. The next morning, the bride and bridegroom and bride left the palace and passed through the dark, gloomy wood into the bright sunshine of the world beyond. And when the princess turned to look at the castle where she had slept so many years, behold, ca behold, castle and wood had vanished, and they stood on an open plain. So the princess rode with her prince to his father's court, and they lived there they lived happily ever after, a life as happy as her dreams. Okay, so that was me reading Sleeping Beauty or Briar Rose. I'm so sorry this was so long, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in another video soon. Bye!